Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A while ago, I purchased this free watt solar panel from a German seller. Ten of them cost me ridiculous 27 euros shipped. And this basically is about 38 US dollars. And I have 10 of them lying around now, and I thought about making a project. And due to the fact we have a pond in our yard, I thought it would be quite nice to have a solar powered pump in there. Because our old pump just failed. And we don't have water in it at this point of time because it would be just too much weird stuff going on there. It would smell and all that kind of stuff. So I also purchased this 5 volt USB pump from China, which was about $4.50, I think. And this small LM2596 buck converter. It cost me about one US dollar ship. I also have multiple of those capacitors lying around. Those are 1250 microfarad 25 volt capacitors. And I want to put them in parallel to just have a little bit of buffer um, for the darker seconds. And the whole thing must be enclosed in something waterproof. So I thought about using this kind of Tupperware thing. I just want to apply hot glue to the sides of it. And put all of the electronics in there. I hope the USB cable on this pump will be long enough, otherwise I will just put an extension cord right beside it. So we can start hooking up the cables. The whole project will run on very few power, so I just thought about using this very cheap cable that I had lying around. It was like in a big, big roll of hundreds of meters, and I just thought about using it because it's just good enough for the project. And it's also very thin and you won't really see it in the garden. So just pass it through to the solar panel, which actually is just 3.2 watt, although it's that big. So once you've soldered it in, just close the panel up. We can now continue with hooking up the capacitors. So just do the same thing as we did in the previous video of building the capacitor bank. We align them so all negative on one side. We just take a piece of tape and tape them together, but it should be a bit bigger so that they're really like tightened together. This is a row of capacitors, and we now have to join negative and positive together. I use non solid co wire, just the same wire as I used in the video of building the capacitor bank because it's just way easier to solder with that wire. Cut this off, twist it around, and feed it through the holes of the capacitors and try to really twist it together nicely because otherwise it will just not work and remember to join all the negatives and all the positives together make sure positive and negative don't touch each other So we're basically finished with the capacitor bank. We only have to solder it in place now. So we're basically finished with the capacitor bank by now. Now we have to make holes into the top of your enclosure to pass the cable through. Also have a look at your solar panel again and find out which cable is negative and which is positive. In my case, I marked the negative wire. Probably the first wire I deal with. Put it to negative in on the DC to DC converter. Also do the same thing with the positive. Take the positive, put it into your enclosure, and 
make sure it's unpeeled correctly. If not, so put it to positive of your input because polarity is quite important with those DC to DC converters. Now you can solder cables to your DC to DC converter. As an output cable, I just use a USB extension cord. As an output cable, I just use a USB extension cord. Cut off piece off the wire and unstrip it. And in there, we will find four wires, one of which After you unstrip the USB wire, you can feed it through the holes in your casing. Make sure the holes are big enough. You will find four little cables. We only need the black and the red one. The rest can be cut off. Unstripped the white one and the black one and solder them to the output of your DC to DC converter. Out minus is the black cable and out plus is the red cable. Now solder the cables to your DC to DC converter. You can now hook up your capacitor bank by unpeeling port off the insulation of the cables inside of your project box. You can look up which is negative and which is positive on the DC to DC converter. This is negative, so we'll hook it up to the negative of the capacitor bank. Just twist the negative of the capacitor bank around there a few times. Cut off any axis put around positive the positive the capacitor bank around that as well cut off any axis once you've put them together you can apply some solder to it We're almost finished with the electronics of this project, but you only might have to add a diode to the input so that the capacitors don't discharge if the sun goes away. Clip off the negative off the solar panel, disconnect it from the capacitor bank. Now unstrip both of the wires and connect the negative coming from the solar panel to the more side of the diode and connect the other side 
to the capacitor bank. You're almost finished by now. You should put out the solar panel into some light or hook up a power supply to your capacitor bank. Always keep in mind that you have to have the right polarity. Now you have to look at your DC to DC converter and put the output voltage to 4 volts so that the, the pump can work without any problems. You will slowly see the voltmeter decreasing in voltage and it should decrease until we're at about 4 volts. So we're basically finished by now. The whole thing will work. We just have to put everything into some glue, tape, glue everything together. So it gets weatherproof. And that's it.